Okay, I have um, pain management and then skin and wounds. So pain-wise, um, all staff is responsible for recognizing, assessing, treating, and monitoring pain. We need to not only recognize when a resident is experiencing pain, but we also need to be able to identify the circumstances um, that pain can be anticipated. Um, so for, let's say, if a resident has a planned dentist appointment where you know they're going to get a tooth extracted, we can anticipate that that resident is going to have pain and treat it prior to it being uh, um, exacerbated. Um, we're going to evaluate for pain on admission during ongoing scheduled assessments and with any change in condition, such as after a fall or altered mental status, um, things like that require um, pain to be monitored. Monitor for behavioral signs and symptoms that may suggest the presence of pain, such as a decline in activities, resisting care, striking out, fidgeting, increase in restlessness, moaning, groaning, things like that. Um, when you do your pain assessments, they need to include the history of their pain and their treatment, um, a rating of their pain, if they're able to give you a number, if they're able to tell you mild, moderate, severe, things like that. Um, any characteristics of the pain, such as the duration, frequency, onset, um, anything that makes the pain better or worse. Um, and then it's always good to include in your actual pain assessment the current medications, their dosing and frequency. That way, when we look at that information, we have a good idea of what is currently being used for them. Um, we also need to include any non-pharmacological interventions that are being used. Do warm blankets help, turning and repositioning, things like that. Um, we need to reassess our residents with pain regularly. If you, especially if you administer pain medication, go back and talk to them ask them if it was effective. Um, if, you're, if their pain is not adequately controlled, we need to make sure that we're contacting the physician, revising their pain regimen, whether that's increasing the dose, increasing the frequency, changing medication so we can keep their pain under control. If their pain is resolved, for instance, if they were receiving a pain medication related to a fall or a fracture or you know, a dental appointment, something that they no longer have that pain for, we need to work on um, decreasing the medication back to their current or their previous level or discontinuing it altogether if it's no longer needed. And when you complete your pain assessment, we need to make sure that um, the very first question on your pain assessment is if you can interview this um, resident. You have to make sure that those questions are appropriate for them. If it's a nonverbal patient and they can't answer those questions, you're not going to say, yes, I interviewed them. You have to make sure that those assessments are accurate. Um, so as far as skin and wound, I do have some handouts if you're interested. This is on just treatment guidelines and this one's dressing guidelines. So like what different dressings are used for, um, what treatments are available and how they're used. And then this one is on the use of the wound phone. Um, in the presence of treatment orders, nurses need to notify the physician to obtain orders. Uh, all treatments are documented in the TAR. If you don't document, it didn't happen. You could change a dressing three times a shift, but if you didn't document, you didn't do it at all. Um, considerations for needed modification of a treatment plan include a lack in progression towards healing or if there's changes in the characteristics of the wound or if the resident's goals have changed. Like let's say they're transitioning to hospice and they have previously had a wound vac. They're not going to need that wound vac anymore. We're going to change our treatment plan. Um, only nurses document wound photos. Do not hand the phone to the SENA and ask them to get the picture for you. It's nurses assessments. Um, training will be provided on the wound phone. We're going to go through a little bit of it here. If you have any questions, please ask. If you don't know how to do it and you go to take a picture, ask somebody on the unit. If they don't know, call me. I am always here. I can help you with the wound phone. Um, when you updated photos, use the same vantage point with the same angle, same distance from the picture. Do not reopen something that's been resolved. If somebody has, let's say they have a wound on their left knee um, that's recurring, it's been resolved for two months, don't click on that picture and take a new one. Open a new wound. Um, when new wounds are found, 
a picture still needs to be taken on their wound day. Let's say their wound day is Friday and you find something on Tuesday. It's not seven days, but that picture still needs to be taken on Friday or the next week it's going to be overdue. So regardless of when you find the wound, it has to be retaken on their wound day. And no wounds will be um, photographed using personal cell phones. Always only use the wound phone. All ulcers are staged at the deepest level. So if you find something today and it's a stage two, it will always be a stage two. It will just be documented as a healing stage two. So as that starts to close up, it's still called a stage two. Um, so like I mentioned, interventions are implemented in accordance with the physician's orders. In the absence of orders, you need to utilize your nursing judgment um, and then make sure you still contact the physician for either approval of the order you've implemented or a change in order. Prevention devices need to be utilized such as um, heel risers, pillows, um, appropriate cushions and wheelchairs, mattresses, whether it's our pressure reducing or an air mattress. And then those interventions need to be documented. If the resident is refusing to use something that's being implemented, if they're refusing a heel riser, if they're refusing um, a specific type of cushion, put in a progress note. And um, maybe if they're not liking that cushion, we can um, contact therapy to have them evaled for a different type of cushion. Um, so skin checks are completed by a licensed nurse at least weekly. This skin check must be head to toe, unclothed, under all folds. You, nurse has to visualize 100% of the skin, a minimum of weekly, and document any changes that are found. Um, when a, if a new uh, wound is found, a packet needs to be initiated. We have skin packets on every unit um, with staff um, statements. One of the biggest things we need to, to focus on is our pressure prevention. Um, some of the things that can help with that is encouraging the resident to um, make smaller frequent changes in position if they're able to do that on their own. If they're not able to do that on their own, we need to, at a minimum, reposition them every hour in their wheelchair and every two hours in bed. Um, if they are refusing any repositioning, the nurses need to document that in a progress note. Um, heels elevated completely off the bed. I know a lot of times residents tend to move heel risers or pillows up their calves. We need to keep repositioning and education if they're appropriate for education. Um, an appropriate cushion in their wheelchair if they have a gel cushion and we're finding new areas on their bottom. We can contact therapy to eval for maybe a rojo cushion or an air cushion, something different. Lift during transfers, don't slide. Use maxi moves or draw sheets so you're avoiding shear and friction injuries. Um, we're checking for incontinence a minimum of every two hours on every resident. And then we need to assist with meals as necessary to ensure proper nutrition, make sure they're getting the appropriate amount of protein and things to heal wounds that they currently have. Um, so failure of a wound to demonstrate improvement requires reassessment of the treatment plan, so we may need to change out that, that treatment. Any significant changes that are found need to be documented as soon as they're noted um, so we can begin to change the process of what's, what's happening. Um, assess and treat for pain during turning and dressing changes, not just at scheduled assessments, doing it those times too. Um, so if you know somebody is has a significant dressing change coming up, we can medicate them appropriately for that dressing change. Um, and make sure your dressing changes are done as ordered. Always check uh, the order for any changes and whatnot. Don't just assume that it's the same as it's always been. Don't change the timing of the orders. If it's scheduled for this time on this day, it needs to stay on that time and that day. And do not apply tegaderms to skin tears. Every section of the um, skin assessment needs to be completed so it can be signed and locked. If one little piece is missing, you won't be able to sign and lock it and then it just sits on the UDA board um, incomplete. So we need to make sure that all sections are, are completed and then you actually sign that assessment. 
So as far as the wound phone goes, I do have your nurse, right? No, Cena, Cena. Okay. Um, so that's all I have for you guys then, and I'm just gonna run through our wound phone. When we do wound pictures, so what is your your steps, I guess, involved in taking a wound photo? So when you take a picture, you wanna try to take the picture at the same angle, same distance. Um, so when you, when you reevaluate, this little picture down here, you can hit this and it, it ghosts the picture. Um, but it is hard to take pictures when you haven't been taking them. That's usually my problem because I bounce around. Yeah. So I'm trying to find the same angle as somebody else. So that's why it's, if you do... You don't have a sticker. I know. I'm going to erase it anyway. Yeah. Um, And then you both know about the refine button. You can hit refine yeah. to snap it down to the wound. Um, so this, your ghosting option, when you reevaluate, you hit this down here and it shows you what your old one looked like, which helps you get the same angle, the same distance, you know, so you're not doing this or the ghosting option really helps with that, so you can retake. I do not know about the ghosting option. Most people I've talked to, I think I've only found one person. I'll be using that from now on. I've hit that picture down there before and seen it done that before. Yep. That's, that's awesome. So, and then before you hit anything else, I just took a second picture. Yeah. This is the picture I just took. If you hold this down, that's my previous picture. Oh, okay, I didn't know Holy that. Moly. So you can see what it was before compared to what it is now. Okay, and when you go through, some people try to do assessments on the phone, they miss things. It, it's much easier if you can go on the computer, that way you know you're clicking every single box. And again, you cannot sign the assessment until every single box is, is checked. Um, Did you guys have any questions on the use of the phone, how to take a picture, how to complete your eval? Mm -hmm. Perfect.